Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. Half a day. Yesterday, I told you that Guam must prepare itself for more days of sadness. Unfortunately, one more of Guam's COVID positive patients passed away at 11.58 this morning. He was 81 years old, admitted to Guam Memorial Hospital on March 26th, and suffered from multiple comorbidities, including diabetes, hypertension, coronary heart disease, and chronic obstructive lung disease. And while these moments have come too quickly, I ask you again to join me in a moment of silence honoring this man's life, those he loved, and those he left behind. To his family and those who knew him, you have our deepest condolences. It has been over two weeks since I first issued the social, social isolation directive. This directive mandates closures of non-essential businesses and facilities. It also prohibited all public gatherings and instituted mandatory social isolation. This directive has been extended to April 13 and I will not hesitate to extend this as needed. This administration is aware that this has caused an upheaval to our daily lives and our economy. It may have seemed out of proportion to the numbers we saw late last week. However, as we were sorrowfully reminded with these recent passings and nine new confirmed cases, we are not out of the woods, far from it. We will continue to see the number of cases increase and unfortunately we must be prepared for more deaths. I am honest with you because saving lives depends not on just the government's actions, it depends on all of you. We must remain vigilant, but we also must remember that kindness and understanding are needed now more than ever. Earlier this morning, I spoke to Admiral Minoni and Admiral Aquilino regarding the letter from Navy Captain Brett Grozier of the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Throughout our response to COVID-19, I promised each of you that I would undertake any action necessary to keep the people of Guam safe. For this reason, I have agreed to allow the restricted housing of sailors who have tested negative for COVID-19. In partnership with the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association, public health officials, and representatives of the Navy, only sailors testing negative for COVID-19 will be housed in the vacant Guam Hotel rooms, subject to a 14-day quarantine period enforceable under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Because I did not make this decision lightly, other conditions must be met as well. There will be daily medical checkups of all sailors, military security will be on every floor and at all points of entry. Individuals will be subject to quarantine protocols. Our beaches are off limits and PPEs will be provided by the military to any hotel worker who is a part of this operation. We have an interest in protecting our community and stopping the spread of COVID-19 just as much as the military has an obligation to return the USS Roosevelt to the open ocean to protect Guam and the region. I know there will be a small chorus of cynics who will oppose this decision but now is not the time for us versus them. While there are sailors on board that ship from every corner of the nation, some of those sailors call Guam home. They sat at Kings with friends on a Friday night. They graduated from places like Simon Sanchez and George Washington. They are our nieces, our nephews, our sons, our daughters and grandsons and granddaughters and we can protect Guam while being humane to them. That is the Guam I know, and we will not abandon who we are out of fear. Every decision we make during this pandemic is made and will continue to be made with the health and safety of our people in mind. 
you entrusted me to leave this office for the good of our island and as your governor it is a responsibility i do not take lightly i would like to thank everyone who has taken our advice to heart by staying home observing the social isolation guidance and exercising the greatest of care so instead of focusing on what you can't do look at what you can do use our hashtag cancel covid g u and show us what you're doing to prevent the spread of covid-19 remember your actions affect not just you, but those around you, including our frontliners. Every day, EMTs and firemen, physicians and nurses fight to keep Guam safe from COVID-19. While these jobs were always acquainted with a certain amount of danger, these frontliners willingly place themselves at risk in ERs and ICUs, in ambulances and our ports of entry. Healthcare professionals sacrifice so that we don't have to. Some have continued working, but left home to protect their families. Others have to explain to their kids why they can't hug them or kiss them goodnight. Don't let their sacrifices be in vain. I'd like to now call up Admiral Manoni to um, make some comments, and then uh, we'll have uh, Dr. Uh, Kovetsky with the epidemiology, and then we'll open up for questions. Admiral Nome. Thank you, Governor Leon Guerrero, for inviting me here today. Uh, first, I would like to thank you and your staff publicly for the leadership, collaboration, communication, and coordination that you've shown throughout this crisis. You know, when we first became aware of COVID-19, and its start and march across the globe, uh, you immediately and your staff immediately contacted Joint Region Marianas to coordinate our efforts, and I truly do appreciate that. Uh, to the people of Guam, first off, I wanna say thanks. Not only has your support been unwavering uh, since all my years on Guam, but during this time of crisis, you have fully been behind uh, the United States Navy, the Air Force, our partners in the Guam Guard, and the Army Reserves. We truly appreciate all your efforts. To the people within the fence lines on the military basis, I've asked a lot of you the last few weeks as we've worked to protect Guam, both inside and outside our bases from the spread of COVID-19, as well as to support our shipmates and sailors on the USS Harry S. Truman, I'm sorry, the USS Theodore Roosevelt and the other ships in port. Uh, you've been asked to sacrifice, you've been asked to work long hours, I truly appreciate your efforts. There's no higher calling than taking care of our shipmates and families. Uh, to the folks that are outside the fence line, once again, thank you so much for your help. Thank you for your prayers. And I really, truly appreciate the outpouring of support that we've seen for the sailors of the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Thank you. Dr. Ann. Uh, thank you and good afternoon. This is the Guam Public Health uh, case report for COVID-19. These numbers do not include the USS Theodore Roosevelt. As of yesterday evening, uh, we tested 31 cases yesterday. There were nine positive uh, COVID-19 cases, 19 negative, and three reruns. To date, we have had almost 500 tests run, 485. Uh, 47 of them were reruns, so about 10% are reruns. And the total number of negatives has been 371 with 69 total to date. That includes four from the U.S. Naval Hospital uh, that were performed uh, at their lab in San Diego. The main reporting sources for all of these positive cases are the hospitals, 48%, the clinics, 48%, and then three from a quarantine uh, site. Majority of the positive cases, 64% are people over the age of 50 years. 36% are those under 50. Of that number over 50, 30%, almost one third are in the age range 60 to 69 years. That's because people in those age ranges tend to have more chronic diseases and they're more at risk for lung infection and so on. About half are male, half are female. 52% are stable. 
32% are hospitalized and 13% have recovered and there are now three deaths. Of these uh, positive cases, 78% had no travel, 22% did have travel. Of those 78% with tra without travel, we, we can get the numbers for you, but most of those have been with um, household or other kinds of community contact. And we're hoping to get that breakdown down for you tomorrow. There are two quarantine sites. There are 221 passengers in quarantine sites, 138 rooms occupied, and there are 360 rooms available. The isolation site has not yet been opened. So people are being isolated at the hospital or in their home or at the um, ICU and SNU. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Ann Pabutsky, our ter ter territorial epidemiologist. I'd like to call on GMH Administrator Lillian Posadas. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, basically, I guess just to give you a little bit of a history of the third uh, individual with the uh, COVID positive who we lost today, uh, it's an individual, as the governor had mentioned, with uh, multiple medical conditions. And so, you know, on, on his age, he was uh, over 80. And so, you know, unfortunately, uh, we lost him uh, to this COVID uh, condition. We also have, as I mentioned this morning uh, at the cabinet report, that uh, we do have five hospital employees who have tested positive uh, for COVID. And those individuals are, are isolated at home. We do have one in the hospital uh, on uh, isolation also. And they are being followed through with the uh, employee health, uh, uh, employee health nurse and infection control. We do have good news. There is one individual who has been in our hospital uh, with COVID positive, uh, tested twice negative. So that individual will be going home. So there is some success with what we're doing and what the community is doing. And you know, with your help of staying home, that really does make a big difference. So thank you. Um, any questions from the uh, media? Nestor Lacanto from KUAM News. Yes, um, thank you, Governor. Um, is the Admiral available for questioning yes. as well? Yes, he is. Okay, um, my first question is, um, the uh, captain of the, uh, the, the Teddy Roosevelt had recommended removal of um, all but 10% of the crew. Is that uh, the plan at this particular point in time? So the plan at this time is to remove as many uh, people off the Teddy Roosevelt as we can, understanding that we have to leave a certain amount of folks on board uh, to do normal watch standing duties to keep the ship running. Uh, that doesn't mean that all of those people will be uh, brought out into hotels within the local community. It means that we'll work with the government of Guam, the Hotel Restaurant Association, and then within our fence lines to appropriately house all of those sailors within CDC guidelines. And, and how many, uh, Admiral, will there be at a time uh, transported down to two months? Yep. We are, uh, we're developing that plan right now, uh, but it's going to be in manageable groups and they'll be uh, transported and controlled by military personnel only. Admiral Aquilino had mentioned a uh, Marine contingent of uh, medical personnel. Can you elaborate on that? So we will have approximately 40 professionals from the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force Medical Battalion arriving on island within the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, those folks are not only here to help the sailors on Theodore Roosevelt, but also to help uh, build capacity at Naval Hospital and then backstop capacity uh, within Gulf Guam. What reassurances would you give to the people of Guam that um, transferring these sailors from uh, Naval Base Guam to Tumon does not pose a threat to them? So the biggest reassurance that I can give you is that all of these sailors that are transported off Naval Base Guam out of their quarantine areas and into Tumon will have a negative COVID test. No one is allowed off the base unless they have been tested negative for COVID-19. The second reassurance that I can give you is that uh, these sailors will be under the direct supervision 
uh, of U.S. naval uh, personnel, both potentially naval security forces, marine security forces, and then potentially uh, local security forces to ensure that they comply with the mandatory 14-day uh, quarantine period. Thank you, Nestor. Pacific Island Times, Johanna. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I would like to ask uh, how many hotels does the military plan to uh, keep the sailors in? How many hotels? I think uh, it's evolving. Um, so the hotel uh, association are working very closely with the military and also with uh, our leadership uh, to identify uh, the need and also to identify the capacity. Okay, and, okay th thank you. And my next question is, um, will, uh, how many sailors will be sharing rooms? Like how many sailor per room? So the intention right now is to put a maximum of two sailors per room that are tested negative for COVID-19. However, it depends on what we can work out with the hotel association because I don't know the configuration of each individual room at this time. Thank you. Johanna, do you have any more questions? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that's fine, just my two. Thank you, Johanna. Pacific Daily News, Steve Lentiaco. Oh, yes, uh, hi, Governor. Um, so when did the military first approach you about the idea of using uh, the hotels? Um, uh, I think about maybe yesterday or the day before. And also have, have any specific hotels been identified at this point, even one or two, or, or is it still undetermined? No, no specific hotel. I know that uh, there was a meeting with the Guam Hotel Restaurant Association group the uh, military, um, our uh, rapid response team, and also public health. Uh, and they're, um, they're putting together the uh, conditions and also the process of how this would work. Steve, any follow-up questions? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, I was, I was muted. Um, so uh, when would this start, the, the quarantines? So while we do have sailors that have tested negative and are in quarantine on Naval Base Guam, uh, in order to build capacity to get further sailors off of Teddy Roosevelt, uh, we'd like to start this as soon as we can. However, we're not going to start it without a good process uh, and procedures in place to protect the people of Guam. Um, you know, we have to work through this together with the government of Guam, the Hotel Restaurant Association, and the planners of the joint region, as well as uh, 7th Fleet and Theodore Roosevelt, to make sure that this is a no-fail system. Thank you. Steve, you have one more question. <laughs> yes, I, okay, um, for the governor, uh, just uh, following up on the election commission, uh, last month uh, sent you a resolution about postponing the special election for uh, joint new mayor. Yeah. Um, are, will there be an election? Uh, there will be. Um, I think we, I, I don't know when we, when it was rescheduled for, but yes, I, uh, I'm aware of the postponement. Thank you, Steve. The Guam Daily Post, Nick Delgado. So Steve, can I just say it's April 8th, it's a reschedule, but uh, we may have to look at that again and just say no election, depending on whether we are going to um, extend the, uh, the, um, the stay in place. Nick Delgado, Guam Daily Post. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Governor. So I know that Dr. Perdalia had mentioned a percentage of people that tested positive in the quarantine sites being, who have been in the hotels. Do we have more information as to the number of people that did test positive in those hotels and, and when? There, there is three. There are three 
um, people that were uh, identified as positive. And this just points to the fact that I think this quarantine is successful and working well. Because if we didn't have the quarantine, um, you can imagine those three positive people out there uh, contacting other people and uh, possibly transmitting. So I just wanted to say that even the people that are in the quarantine now are saying that they were uh, very appreciative and very grateful that uh, they are also uh, helping with protecting the community. Hey, and I know yesterday we got a breakdown of uh, the status of relocating some of the non-COVID patients out of the Guam Memorial Hospital and how they're prioritized. But uh, what's the update with, with relocating those patients? Because as we understand, there's a woman in labor at GMH today with symptoms of potential person under investigation. Uh, and so I know there's been a lot of concern about relocating those patients. Where are we at there? I have not uh, gotten any information about a change in what the uh, status and the report is that we gave you, but Lillian is here and she could probably add more to it. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, Nestor, for that question. Yes, on a daily basis, we do transfer uh, the uh, adult uh, individuals and patients from the ICU and even from the telemetry unit whenever GRMC is available and ready to receive. So on a daily basis, we move one or two patients. In terms of the um, transferring of the maternal child health uh, patients, that's kind of like on the bottom of the priority because remember the, the statistics are showing us that the adult uh, individuals with comorbidities are more at a greater risk. So that's what we're doing first is moving the ICU patients, adult patients, and the telemetry adult patients. In terms of the individual that you mentioned who is a pregnant individual in the hospital, yes, that is true. We do have that uh, female individual. We have processed her as a POI based on the symptoms that uh, the individual reported to the doctor and we are treating her, we're keeping her, we are keeping her in an isolation uh, area and we're also preparing the OB nursery right now to receive the newborn in an incubated, uh, contained uh, uh, incubator to then again minimize exposure. But, uh, you know, and so that's what we're doing right now. Thank you. Do you have any follow-up questions? Uh, Governor, I know that, uh, that there's been a lot of thanks given uh, between the military and, and it was a tough decision for you to make in, using our hotels and, and facilities off the base to accommodate these sailors. Last week you had mentioned that there would be no contact of sailors with the military and the civilian population and obviously these hotels will still have our civilian workers uh, manning, manning these facilities. Uh, any, any concern there with that potential exposure? I know we said that these sailors are negative but there was always a concern about potential exposure and as we as much as we can anticipate it we are addressing it um i know that with the hotel workers i believe the military and that they can speak to it but they're going to have their own resources also at the at the hotels and we will minimize the contact of these uh, hotel workers to almost no contact um they're not going to be going in to change the linens they're not going to be, um, you know, working uh, in direct contact with these individuals. My understanding is that uh, the military has is going to set up a process that is going to make sure that there is no contact. So uh, I don't know if the admiral will want to add in some of that. So there's a strict, you know, no touch, no contact policy. Uh, at this time, out of an abundance of caution, even though these sailors have tested negative, we're going to put in a, a buffer of local sailors uh, and Marines that are going to essentially be the forward facing element of the hotel. So the staff will be working in the background running the hotel, any interactions uh, with the sailors that are housed in these hotels. Uh, will be appropriate in accordance with CDC guidelines, but it'll be military to military and not uh, military sailors to staff of the hotels. Yeah, sir, thank you for that answer. I just want to ask real quick, is there any message that you want to say to those families who have sailors from Guam that are on board 
this vessel? Any message uh, to them? Well, thank you for that question. You know, the, as a former commanding officer of a ship and squadrons, you know, there's no higher calling uh, than doing our nation's work and leading uh, the men and women that decide to serve in the United States military. We take it as a solemn obligation uh, to protect those sailors as best we possibly can, given the environments that we're asked to work in sometimes. Uh, everybody from the highest levels of the Navy down to uh, the lowest deck plates on that ship uh, are working uh, their hardest to ensure that we protect our sailors and do our absolute level best to ensure that they're healthy and ready to go to sea to do the nation's work. Thank you, Nick. Pacific News Center, Kevin Kerrigan. Yes, good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon, Kevin. This question is for Admiral Minoni. Okay. Um, we understand that only sailors who test negative will be placed in hotels off base. But what will happen to the sailors who test positive? Will they remain on board the Roosevelt or will they be isolated on Naval Base Guam? And what steps are being taken to ensure that those who have tested positive do not come in contact with any base employees? So Kevin, right now, just like we've done for anybody locally who has tested positive, those sailors are immediately uh, treated uh, in accordance with CDC guidelines at Naval Hospital Medical Center or on uh, Theodore Roosevelt by their medical personnel. Uh, they're evaluated at that time and then they're immediately, um, if they don't require medical intervention, they're immediately put into isolation. Um, think single rooms uh, with their own private bathroom and then they're given medical checks daily uh, to ensure that their health and well-being is, is, is a, is continues to improve. Um, there is no contact at any time, whether it is between the medical professionals that are doing those evaluations or even the folks that come by to, to drop off uh, food for them. There's no interaction, no contact uh, in accordance with the standard social distancing guidelines that, that we're all observing. Thanks for the question, Kevin. So the positive, the sailors who test positive are in isolation on base, not on the Roosevelt. Is that correct? That is correct. I, I was also wondering if you can say, are there any other naval ships in port besides the Roosevelt or expected to come to Guam who may have uh, positive treatment ID sailors aboard? So Kevin, you know, Guam is a, in a strategic location and it has a wonderful deep water port um, that is a strategic national asset for for all of us, um, but I'm not gonna comment really on the fleet movements. And I certainly don't really have any knowledge of who has what on what ship. That's just not my role. I understand, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin, Can I have a question? Yes, I'd like to ask the governor, People are clamoring for relief, as you well know. Um, and I'm just wondering if you can give us a, a broad sense of when Guam may have access to any of these many relief provisions uh, in the CARES Act that was passed last Saturday. In particular, are we any closer to a date for unemployment relief or the staff at $111 million in discretionary funds? Yes, so with the $111 million, um, we are working closely with the U.S. Treasury, and uh, the the law says that after we become certified, so we have to give them a, a plan that they will certify. And once that's certified, I think within 30 days we can see the funds uh, coming in. Coming in. As far as the pandemic uh, unemployment benefits, I know that our uh, director of labor, Department of Labor has his contacts and they're working. We already signed the agreement that's necessary. And I and in my recent um, in my recent meeting with President Trump and Vice President Trump, uh, Vice President Pence, and also uh, the Secretary of uh, Labor, Secretary uh, Scalia, 
um, they're saying that once we sign this memorandum of agreement, which we have and we have sent off island, that we, when we get the program and the processes in place, which we are working very uh, diligently to have, we would be able then to get the funds. And so, you know, I don't have a specific date, but I'm, anticipa I'm anticipating uh, within the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Kevin. Mariana's Business Journal, Rianne. Hello. Hello. Hi, Rianne. Hi. Uh, so my question would be um, if uh, you'd be able to share like the demographic information of the, the people who have recovered from COVID if possible. Do you have that? Okay. Did you get it tomorrow? Yeah, we, we'll get it to you tomorrow. We don't really have the demographics, so I'm not even going to guess. Okay. And um, so my next question would be um, if there's like an update on like how many people uh, here have uh, like filed for like the unemployment benefits to uh, be receiving that relief. Yeah. Well, we haven't really gotten the actual application process on, in place. Uh, we are working, though, very closely with employers to give us the numbers. Um, and we are working to also uh, develop um, an online uh, application that would make it easier for individuals to apply. So we can also minimize exposure and contact. Rian, do you have any other questions? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Thank you. We also have CBS and Wall Street Journal on the line. Do you have any questions? CBS or Wall Street Journal? I'm okay, thank you. You're okay, thank you. Now we'll have closing remarks from Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. Uh, thank you very much. Again, we just want to emphasize uh, the need for everybody to stay home. Uh, and uh, that really should be a consistent message that everybody takes. Um, and the only other things I want to add um, to do are two things. I want to recognize the Department of Education for their hard work in getting meals out to, um, to uh, families. Um, they have expanded their capacity uh, and they're really working hard. I also want to recognize the Judiciary of Guam for assigning 15 law enforcement officers to supplement uh, efforts by the police department and uh, by the public health surveillance teams. Um, this is a partnership that uh, requires the entire government to be part of the team. Uh, and finally, uh, I would just tell parents that uh, we're working with Department of Education and PBS Guam to really try and organize some resources that they can use uh, with their children. We know that this is unprecedented, uh, probably for the amount of time that your kids are in the house uh, you know, practice patients uh, for those that need some help. Again, we have a crisis hotline at Guam Behavioral Health, and we'll look at trying to set up some other avenues for people to get that assistance. So on behalf of our people and the government of Guam, we ask you, please stay home, do what's right, uh, assume that you have it. And if you assume that you have it and you care about your loved ones, make sure that you comply and do the right thing. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. See you at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Or 1 p.m. tomorrow.